In this video, we're going to talk about indexing structure arrays using the dot operator in order to get out one value or multiple values. So suppose I have this structure array here. And let's say, so first off, we, before we talk about values, let's say I want to just index the first structure. Right? So I want to figure out my first tennis player. I can have first, and it's going to be, this, it's going to be very similar um, using the dot operator that we use in terms of indexing um, just one structure and then also creating structure arrays. So you give it the name of the structure, let's say it's called ST. So this is called ST. And then if I want the first person, the first, the entire structure, I just index it at the first position. It's as if it were a vector, because that's all it really is, is a vector of structures. Um, so in this case here, first would be the first structure. Now let's say I wanted to get out my second person's sport. Okay, so let's call it sport two. All I would have to do is I have to say my structure at the second position dot sport. Okay, so it's always the name of the structure, the parentheses, then the index that you want to access, then dot, and then the field name that you want to access. So in this case here, this sport would be tennis, even though everyone's thing is tennis, but it'll just be the second one's um, sport. Whereas this first one here, so this is class char, and this first one here would be class struct where it's the entire first structure. And it's that simple. And so this is very common with structure arrays where I have the structure array and let's say I wanted to get out everyone's name. I wanted to figure out everyone's name that was inside of my structure. So I want to have multiple names and let's say I save them inside of one variable. Um, in order to do this, it's very similar to the same way that we did with cell arrays. So right now, if I said I wanted everyone's name, so let's say it was like all names, okay? And let's say I index my structure, and let's say I said all of them with the colon, and I said name. This is shorthand for a loop in the sense that it's going to go through each one, and it's going to, um, one by one, try to place it inside of all names. But you're only going to get back one of them. It's the same exact thing that we talked about in, with cell arrays. So instead, if I want all of my names, I need to put them inside of some sort of data structure or some sort of entity to hold my data. And so right now, if I know that they're all chars inside of my names, it would be beneficial for me to put them all inside of a cell array. And so what I have to do is I just wrap that in curly braces. So right now, this would produce a cell array where in the first one, it's Serena, Second one is Venus. Oh, that's terrible handwriting. The last one is Maria. Okay. Now, I could also put this inside of a vector. I could say all names square brackets st dot name like this. It doesn't error, but all it does is it creates, it concatenates all of my strings together. So therefore I get one long string that is this. And I don't know how helpful that would be. Um, I mean, and perhaps if you wanted to figure out all the characters in everyone's name, this might be good because then you can just take the length of this, but you don't know when one starts and when another one starts, or it just might make your life harder in order to figure that out. But in order to access multiple values inside of a structure array, you, um, if you just do it without curly braces or parentheses, you're only going to get back one of them. So therefore you have to save those values in either a vector or curly braces, just like we did with cell arrays. And it's that simple.